So I'm here at International Tropicals, a relatively new store, one year old. They've kindly invited me along to do a scape, which I'm going to do later, well, very soon. I'm going to be scaping this Superfish Start 150 litre tank here, using these plants here, using some soil and some lovely wood. But before I do that, I wanted to show you around this lovely little fish store. Really healthy fish, really good selection. Classic kind of bread and butter tropicals here. And the owner, Darren, has got plans to expand soon as well. And they're gonna have a showroom with aquascapes in it, etc. So it's gonna be, uh, this is just a, a start, I think, of his journey. So excited to see where he goes. And yeah, hopefully be doing some scapes maybe for these guys soon, some more scapes. So let's have a, a quick look. We've got some cold water fish, obviously some goldfish there. Regular kind of bread and butter tropicals, some cichlids as well. All really good, healthy fish. They're all quarantined for a good couple of weeks before they come in the store. Really nice clean tanks. Healthy fish, it's what we like. They've got a good selection of plants as well. These are all aquadistry. I'm using a lot of aquadip plants as well today. Uh, I think there's 80 or 90 tanks altogether, all freshwater tropicals. So yeah, if you are in the lowest off area in uh, Norfolk, or Suffolk even, it's near Norfolk, uh, do pop in. It's only been running for a year, so not a lot of people may have heard of it. Uh, but do check out their Facebook page as well. Lots of uh, regular updates on there. And start, they've just started an Instagram as well, so you can follow them, international underscore tropicals. But lovely little store, and I'm excited to create their first display for them soon. So what I'm gonna do now, guys, is put the phone on a tripod. Okay, guys, welcome to uh, this aquascaping workshop here at International Tropicals. Uh, massive apologies for the technology dramas. Uh, I think we tried six times on YouTube live stream, and this is, I think, the third time on Instagram. But we're here right now, so hopefully we're good. Um, it's going to take probably between an hour, uh, an hour or so, or two hours maybe, to escape this. Hopefully you can stay with me for the full stream, I really appreciate it. Try to share it as well, that would be great. And don't forget to follow International Tropicals on Facebook and Instagram. Um, most of you know who I am. Oh, this is weird because it's like a workshop with no real people here. Even the staff have disappeared in the back room and watching it live on Instagram. So. This is a very unique experience for me, just talking to an iPhone. So hopefully uh, it sounds okay and looks okay. I'm just gonna nip around just to make sure we're all good. Okay, good. So yes, I'm here to create a, hopefully a beautiful display for International Tropicals here in Lowestoft. This is a super fish aquarium. This is a, a kind of budget friendly brand here in the UK and Europe. Um, it comes with some LED strip lighting, but we've taken the, hid, the, the hood off so I can work open top and we'll put the lighting on at the end and show you what the scape looks like with the supply lighting. So I'm going to create a kind of classic nature aquarium. Um, the interesting thing about doing an aquascaping workshop in a store like this is that the kind of the access to materials is relatively kind of the range of materials is limited when compared to a, a full-on aquascaping specialist which is what I usually you know do aquascaping uh, displays for so it's a really good exercise for me to just use what the shop has got I think I've got some great plants and great hardscape and we can create something really beautiful but hopefully it shows to you guys that you can even in a regular kind of fish store you can still get great products and create a beautiful aquascape in a very beginner friendly aquarium as well. So that's the idea behind this kind of workshop live stream is to show you guys, you can have a budget friendly system with budget friendly plants. We're not gonna use CO2 injection, relatively low levels of light, and you can create, you know, hopefully a beautiful aquascape on a tight budget, and you can do it as a complete beginner as well, because this is gonna be very beginner friendly. So I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so let's get started. So first thing we usually do, is put our substrate in. We've got a couple of different types here. We have got a soil-based substrate, so that's good news. We've got TMC Nutrisoil here. This is very similar to the other soils you can get on the market, Tropica, Aquarium Soil. Um, I have used this 
before. I used to actually work as a brand ambassador for Tropica um, for TMC in 2014. So I have used this product and it is a proven performer. Um, as with most soils, it doesn't need any rinsing. You can use it completely on its own. You don't need to put a nutrient rich base layer in there. And so, yeah, it's so easy to use. It, it lowers the pH of the aquarium water. It also lowers the hardness slightly as well, which promotes the kind of better environment uh, for the plants, fish and shrimp as well. So really great product, relatively expensive compared to a sand or a gravel, but the results are so much better. You know, you, it's a real investment and you're, what you're doing, you're investing in the plants and the plant success. If you, you know, if you spend a little bit of money, invest in the right products, you know, you don't have to get super expensive products, but just basic stuff like a good soil, good liquid fertilizers, and you'd be surprised at what you can grow really, really well. So definitely worthwhile to invest in the soil. So we might get a little bit of an ammonia spike with this. It is worth testing the water regularly before adding any livestock. What I like to do is actually run the tank without any fish, maybe some cherry shrimp or something really hardy at the beginning. Let the plants develop, um, let the tank kind of go through its cycle and then add fish kind of two or three or even four weeks later once everything's kind of settled in. And those plants are kind of matured and they're starting to use up lots of nutrients. So when you put the fish in, any ammonia that, that those fish are producing, the plants can use and also that filter will likely be seeded as well from the potential ammonia that's come out of the soil. So we put the last pot in here. This is a new soil I've not used before. If you can see that Ascol soil, very similar structure. I guess it's a similar kind of volcanic ash based soil like the TMC stuff. Just figure out how to get the lid off. There we are. So thanks for joining. Use the, use the chat as an opportunity to kind of you know, chat amongst yourselves. I can't obviously see the chat right now. Um, I'm sure we've got some regulars on here. I know my mate Mark Dorr is watching. I have to give him a shout out for moderating the unsuccessful YouTube live stream earlier. So uh, yes, that's all good fun, isn't it? Oh, I've never had technology fail on me so bad. It's really, really embarrassing. I can't apologize enough. But we're here now and hopefully everyone is watching and enjoying uh, this workshop so far. Let's have a look, make sure we're all good. Yes, excellent. Good, 150 people watching. That's pretty good audience size for Instagram. I think I think that's the most I've ever had. That's exciting. Okay, so with the substrates in, I have um, slightly sloped it towards the rear. What that does, it promotes a greater sense of depth, like an optical illusion at the tank is actually slightly wider front to back than it really is because it's sloping up into the distance. And that's just one of the tricks we can use to enhance the sense of depth. Depth is really important in aquascaping. If you want to master aquascaping, you need to master the use of depth. And we can do that in, in different ways. And one of the easiest ways is to slope the soil. So let's make sure that's nice and flat. We don't, no one likes a wonky soil, do they? Okay, I'm just gonna have a bit of a Corona cough here. Excuse me a minute. <coughs> there we go okay so that's the soil in now we have some beautiful wood okay so I am going to scape backwards which is going to be interesting let me I might even get the that studio light a bit nearer the tank so you might get some more definition. Just bear with me a second. There we go, that might be a bit better. Okay, let everyone know where you're from, what country you're from, what city you're from. That'd be really cool. So I'm scoping backwards now, so this is gonna be interesting. So my kind of rough technique I usually do is start off with the biggest piece of hardscape and work my way down. And the reason for that is the biggest piece is usually the focal point. And I usually put that around about, the we're using the rule of thirds, a third of the way along. So using my reverse kind of 
tactic. Let's kind of put that around there. These are definitely going to sink. I've tested these in the plant bay there. They all sank straight away. So fingers crossed we don't get any more dramas. So let's put that one again, rule of thirds maybe. Trying to use trying to get some good height in here. That's not quite gonna. So I am kind of just experimenting right now. It is in reverse, so it is almost impossible for me to tell if it's any good right now. So we might not need all four pieces, but let's just... Six on there. And then we've got some nice opportunities to attach some epi fights, hopefully. That's the idea. Excuse the banging noise. That's probably going to sound really noisy on the microphone. I do apologise. Okay. too bad is it? Not too bad considering I'm going backwards. I think Oliver Knott did a, a workshop um, blinded didn't he? I'm pretty sure he did that. I think the Green Aqua do something similar as well. Okay let's check that out. Okay let me try and get the light even a bit better for the tank for you. Okay, let's just move that a bit so you can see the full tank. The tank is 150 litres, so it's about, the dimensions to me look about 90 centimetres or 36 inches by about 14 inches or 36 centimetres by... It looks about 45 centimetres tall. So yeah, given about 140, 150 litres, which is about 40, 40 US gallons, I would say. Um, okay, so that's the hardscaping. I don't know if we can make it look any, any better. We could probably move that one over a bit, actually. But make it a bit of a nicer balance there. Okay, so when we are uh, choosing our hardscape and position it, the first thing to do is think about choosing the right hardscape. So, what you know, what kind of story are you wanting a, wanting to tell with your aquascape? Don't just walk into a store, pick any kind of random hardscape, and just hope for the best and, and position it in your aquarium as best you can. Have a kind of plan. What kind of aquascape do you want to create? You can get inspired by uh, lots of uh, books, magazines, the internet, of course. My personal number one inspiration is Takashi Amano, sadly passed away in 2015. But his legend lives on, you know, the nature aquarium philosophy, which most of us know and love. You know, that's what we're kind of doing today. So we're using natural materials, we're using natural wood here. We're not using any rock today. I didn't want to use, there's quite a lot of real estate being used up by this wood. And I think, you know, I want to plant it quite heavily. I want to make it a really densely planted tank. I do love my densely planted aquariums and it is a good showcase to kind of sell the plants for the store as well. So just wood here today, but as you can see, natural products, we're using the same type of wood. We rarely mix wood types, it doesn't look very coherent and you know not very natural. We're trying to create the most natural looking kind of aquascape that we can. We're not directly kind of copying you know, an underwater habitat. Uh, we're not copying you know, a landscape, but we're using a kind of an essence of both in the aquarium environment and that's kind of what the nature aquarium philosophy for me is all about that's how i interpret it is is getting this essence of nature uh, from outside and bringing it into the aquarium space so some really nice pieces of bogwood here we know they're going to sink they may leach some tannins so for those that don't know tannins are they kind of uh, they're just like uh, organics that will taint the water uh, they'll turn the water like a translucent kind of brown color like a tea color almost but we can 
mitigate that with water changes where you might want to use some chemical filtration. Um, but actually in terms of the fish, they don't mind the tannins usually and a lot of people actually deliberately aim for tannins to create a black water scape which are becoming a lot more popular now which is great to see. Um, I've probably done 10 or 12 or so over the years, a couple of them have been in PFK. I am intending on doing a black water at some point at home as well. So yeah, watch this space. Okay, so hardscape, really important to buy the right amount, the right size. Think about the height. So a uh, big common mistake for beginners is not using enough height in their hardscape. You know, they might buy some nice stones or some pieces of wood, but they don't fill up the space appropriately. So when we're filling up the space, what I mean is this front pane of glass here. You know, think about where these points are. You know, think about composition, think about rule of thirds. You know, this is around about a rule of the th uh, third of the way along and a third of the way up. Same with this one. And these two hopefully look quite balanced with this. So very, very quick hardscape lesson there, but hopefully you can kind of uh, understand what I'm on about. Um, on hardscape, it is the backbone of the layouts. You know, it is really important to create a high impact aquascape. Otherwise you just purely have to rely on the plants and the plant growth. And that can be a challenge. Um, so if you start off with a really strong hardscape, use some nice foreground, midground, background plants, and then finally some epiphyte plants. That is that my kind of process of creating an easy and high impact aquascape. So I'll just repeat that. Foreground, midground, background, and then the epiphytes. So start off with a strong hardscape. Think about your foreground, midground, background, and then the epiphyte plants. And then that's, that's pretty much it in terms of creating that composition. That's a basic guide to, you know, the hardscape and the planting. Okay, so that is the hardscape in. Now it is time to plant. I have prepared the plants already. I will kind of try to show you. I'll show you, this. I'll show you each species at a time as I do them. I'll start off in the foreground. Let me just get my aquascaping tweezers. So first of all, I have got some, I'm not sure if you can see this, I'll just try and put my hand in front of the camera for you. Here we have some aquafleur tissue culture plants, I can't remember their, their brand name, but they do their own uh, tissue culture. So this is guaranteed, these are guaranteed to be free from algae, pesticides, pests, snails, um, I already said algae didn't I? Um, but the great thing is, this is just one pot, and I've probably got about 30 individual portions here. So really good value for money. And they only had the one pot in the store, so I've tried to divide it up as much as I can to get the most economical coverage. And this is a good, t this is a good tip. If you're, if you're a beginner, if you're on a tight budget, and you don't want to kind of spend too much money on your plants, then definitely consider the tissue culture and definitely split them up as much as you can because although they're much smaller than the regular potted plants they are greater in abundance you get more, much more quantity of them so they are good value for money now it will be interesting to see if this does grow in here without co2 injection this is Eleocharis acicularis it does have i think it has enough light and the soil is a good soil <coughs> excuse me and we do have liquid fertilizers. So I think it will be okay. I think it will just uh, be very slow growing, which is fine. We want a low maintenance tank. You know, the guys in the store are busy serving customers, looking after the fish tanks. So, you know, it's a good entry. You know, none, no, the guys here aren't experienced aquascapers either, as far as I know. So it will be nice sort of entry level for them. They can learn how to maintain this, hopefully get some success with this aquascape, inspire some new customers, and then when they get around to opening their bigger place with their showroom, etc., the staff themselves could potentially set up some beautiful scapes, you know, and maintain them and, you know, inspire a whole new load of customers. That's the whole idea. You know, this is why I love these workshops. It's better to obviously do it in front of real people 
Um, but this is the next best thing, you know, live streaming in front of you guys. Um, and yeah, hopefully inspiring and educating you guys as well. So how is everyone doing in these corona times? I am, um, I'm in England for those that don't know and we go on a national lockdown on Thursday. So yeah, not great, but it is what it is. And let's not talk about that too much. Let's talk about the joys of aquascaping. Who's ordered my new book? <laughs> Let me know in the comments. And thank you so much if you did. Um, my wife and I, Emma, um, we spent all weekend uh, sending out the books so we ordered 420 from the states they arrived a couple of weeks ago and then yeah we spent all weekend shipping them so packaging them up I was signing them Emma was writing the envelopes and yeah pretty much every spare hour we had over the weekend was spent uh, sending out these books so they're all on their way as we speak so those in the UK should get theirs maybe even tomorrow or the day after, hopefully by the weekend at least. And those in the rest of the world, you know, a good sort of five to 10 days, I would suggest. But yeah, you'll hopefully get them before the official release date in uh, on November the 10th. So thank you so much to those that uh, did buy the book from my website. You can also buy it from Amazon. It isn't available, unfortunately, on Amazon UK until January. Um, I do apologise for the confusion over all of that. It's out of my control with Amazon and the publishers, unfortunately. Um, but in the US, I believe it is available from November the 10th. And you can still pre-order from my website, but we can't ship the next batch until January 2020, obviously January next year. So about two, three months to wait, unfortunately, for that. So, Eleocaris acicularis. Normally, a common name, hair grass, hopefully sends out runners, and then you'll eventually form a solid lawn. That is the idea. It will be interesting, like I said, to see how this does over the months. But I'm quite confident, you know, good, good quality soil to feed the plant roots, good quality liquid fertilizer to feed the leaves of the plants. You know, low, low, it's going to be kind of low to moderate lighting in here, I'd suggest. I think it's too, I think it's too 16 watt, I can't remember. So we'll have about probably 30 watts of LED altogether, which should be enough, should be enough. I mean, carpeting plants are usually the hardest to grow because they're the furthest away from the light and they're the furthest away usually from any, any circulating water, which means they get less CO2, they get less light, and so they tend to be harder to grow. So, but this is one of the easier species, so fingers crossed. The guys could always replace it with something easier like Cryptocryne parva, Liliopsis brasiliensis, uh, Helanthium tenalum. You know, all of these are, you know, Starogyne repens even. That's a nice, easy plant. Um, but yeah, there we go. Oh, we need, got some, we've got some more to plant here. Let me just check the stream again. That's great. Thank you for, wa thank you for watching, everyone. So just another shout out to International Tropicals. Check them out on Facebook. They've got an Instagram page as well. I don't know if my mate Mark Dorr is still watching. Mate, if you can maybe put some hyperlinks in for people, uh, that'd be really helpful. I do feel, I do feel bad for them because I was supposed to be like YouTube streaming this and I normally get, I normally get sort of four or 500 concurrent viewers um, and the quality may be better, I don't know. But anyway, we are where we are and we're still creating a beautiful scape, hopefully, for these guys and inspiring you along the way. Right. Okay, so that is the Eleocaris acicularis in the foreground. One pot, ideally we'd probably have two or three pots, maybe a few more to get some a uh, bit more of a density in there. But that the one pot is what I had to work with today. So let's move on to the kind of mid-ground area. We've got a couple of species here, three species in fact from the mid-ground. Let's start off with the smallest. 
Now, I'm actually unsh unsure of this plant. I, it's definitely a crypt, but I'm not sure which species it is. It didn't have a label in the thing. I think, hopefully, it's maybe Cryptechi. Um, let me or maybe even Cryptropica, but let me let me know in the comments if you can recognise that. Thanks, Mark. I'm not sure if you can actually click the hyperlinks, can you? If you put at if you put at international under stroke tropicals, that's their uh, Instagram. And then if you just search international tropicals on Facebook, you'll be able to find it there. So this is the going to be the mid ground plants, or one of the mid ground plants. I'm going to I'm going to plant this towards the the edges here. And then I've got some quite a bit of a taller plant, which we'll talk about in a minute, to go around the base of the wood. So I've prepared these earlier. Just remove them from the pot. Remove the rock wall and then split the plant, the, the whole kind of portion, the whole plant into several portions. And then we just simply... Wendy T.I. Okay, cool. So this is Crip, Crip Wendy T.I. It says Warren. Thank you, Warren. Warren is the uh, manager here. He reached out to me actually a few months ago to organise the workshop, which is challenging obviously in these corona times. Uh, but here we are. And I appreciate the opportunity to create a, another scape for a lovely store. Okay, we're getting there. So crypts, beautiful plants, some of my favourites. You know, I love a crypt. Nice and easy. Don't need CO2 injection. Don't need much light. And low maintenance. They don't grow very quickly. They don't take over the tank usually. So it's a really nice species for a long-term sustainable aquascape, which is what we're, what we're trying to create today. So important to use tweezers and this sort of setup. It just makes sure the plant stays in the soil. As you can see, we're planting dry. This is a tip that I actually picked up from my good friend, Yuri's, my fellow aquascaper from Germany. And congratulations to him. He recently got married. I was supposed to go to the wedding, but obviously with the, with the situation, that didn't happen. But congratulations, let's say congratulations everyone to Yuri's for his recent marriage to his lovely wife. So now we've got, let me just show you this beautiful plant. So here we've got um, Lagonendra Meboldii Red, quite similar to a crypt, but it's, what's the, I can't remember the main difference now, that's embarrassing. It's, it's very similar to a crypt, but it doesn't send out runners. It, it, like some crypts do, it grows the, the leaves from the rootstock. So, again, another low maintenance plant, an easy plant, doesn't need much light. But if you do give it, if you do give it stronger light, you can normally get some sort of red, burgundy, uh, brown coloration from it. At the moment, you can see it's like a green brown color. But if we did have the opportunity to get more light on it, then it would turn a, you know, a bit more of an intense red color. But it does get quite tall, but it will take a long time. In this scape, it will take a long time to get too tall, if at all. Too tall, if at all. So I'm kind of mixing a little bit up with the crypt as well there. Looking good. Bit, a bit there as well. Okay. Okay, next we've got another kind of mid-ground plant. This is going to be more of like a centerpiece plant. So my idea is, it's a bit crazy. So my idea is the center of the tank here is going to get the most light just by the nature of how lights work in an aquarium. And this is Echinodorus. It looks like Rini. And 
this will hopefully go a, even even more of a red colour, add a bit of a centrepiece, literally. You can't quite see it now, but it will get quite a bit taller. So when I, I will take the camera off the mount and show you around later. But I'm just planting this around the base of the wood. And hopefully that's going to form a lovely, like I said, centrepiece in the longer term. Let's pop a bit here as well. It doesn't need much light, this plant, although like, like the Lagenendra, the more light you give it, the more colour you'll get from the leaves. All of these plants are going to benefit hugely from this soil that we're using. You know, they gain a lot of nutrients from their roots. And one of the best ways to get that nutrients is via soil. And then you can even add something like uh, root capsules as well to eat to target feed specific plants that might need a bit more nutrients as well. So have to be really careful when filling this tank up so that wood doesn't fall over. Just looking for the most opportune spaces to put the plants. It's quite interesting working from the back. I'm actually on my tiptoes. It's quite a tall tank and we're on quite a tall kind of work surface here. So I'm actually having to, uh, to use my tippy toes here. Just pop that in the side. Uh, try not to move that wood too much. Interesting colours, it's quite um, quite browny looking. I do like brown plants, I know I'm maybe a bit weird there. Um, but yeah, it's, I quite like it. Okay, what I'm gonna do now, guys, I'll show you what I can see from this side and uh, see what you think. So I'll just take you off the tripod for a moment. So you can see the colours are quite interesting, aren't they? And these will change in form, you know, as they adapt from their immersed form to their submerged form, they're obviously going to change slightly. Might get a little bit of crit melt as well, uh, but that they've got a healthy root stock, so they'll just generate new roots, new, new leaves, sorry, straight away. Excuse me, I'm just going to put you back on the tripod a second. Again, sorry about this. There we go. Okay, it's great to see everyone chatting amongst themselves in the chat. Okay, next we've got a couple of species of stem plant here. Lots of weeds, basically. Hygrophilus polysperma, and we've got Ludwigia palustris green as well. So, most of you have heard of palustris red, maybe, but there is a green variety as well. So, that's cool to know. So I'm going to mix it up. They're both green, so they're going to form you know, a nice kind of green background, different, slightly different textures. The, the Ludwigia palustris green has a more of a rounder leaf, where the polysperma has a, a longer, more slender leaf. Uh, but mixing them together, I think, is going to create a really lush background effect. And also, another massive positive to using fast growing weeds is that they help to really fight off algae. You know, algae is really, really uh, likely in a new setup. So the faster the growing plants and the easier they are to grow, the less likely we're gonna get algae. You know, in, um, even if you've got like an advanced aquascape and you don't actually wanna use any fast growing weeds, I would always suggest, you know, considering putting them in at the start of the aquascape's life and then you can always gradually remove them as the tank gets more mature. You know, another, another idea is to use floating plants as well. You know, this does the same sort of thing. They're obviously a little bit more easy to maintain. You could just literally scoop them off if they get too dense. But flo floating plants in particular are fantastic. You know, they have uh, much more access to light because they're nearer the light source. They have unlimited access to CO2 in the air. So this combination makes them super fast growers. 
you know, another great thing about any any fast growing plant, you know, it, they are the ones that first show up the nutrient deficiencies. So, you know, a lot of we used to call these indicator plants. So always keep an eye, you know, on your fastest growing plants in your tank, and that's going to be the first one to show any problems. You know, that, that's going to probably be the one to show the pale growth quickest. And then you need, you know, you need to add more fertilizers, for instance, because it's, if you keep that, you know, that nutrient deficiency going for too long. The plants are going to really suffer and then a suffering plant usually leads to algae problems so really important to keep these plants well fed you know fed through their roots with a good substrate like we've got here the soil and then fed through their leaves with a good quality liquid fertilizer so the filter in here is going to probably be an internal filter it does come supplied this is the super fish start 150 it comes with led lighting and internal filter and i think it comes this this is the biggest one they do i think and it comes in at about i think it comes in just under 300 pounds or 200 no under 200 pounds i think I'm, I'm confused i think it's 199 anyway you can google it and you can get it from international tropicals of course and you can come and see this beautiful display once it's uh, up and running Oh, there's some fireworks. A little PTSD will kick in in a minute from my uh, my joys in Afghanistan. <laughs> For those that didn't know, I did bomb disposal in Afghanistan. So aquascaping now is a little bit more of a chilled career choice, shall we say? Although it wasn't so chilled earlier when I was fighting with the technology. That was a challenge, I have to say. I had to really go into uh, problem solving mode. Yes interesting so loads of stem plants here more than enough these are going to grow really well help establish the tank they'll look great you know once you know the staff might get fed up of trimming them but you know sometimes it's just nice to let them go wild as well create a bit of a jungle vibe definitely a jungle vibe tank i think this one definitely in the longer term no. real beginner friendly scape you know it's nothing fancy here guys really just nice dominant you know nice kind of bold wood the plants you know really nice quality would have not maybe nicer to get if i could get more kind of hair grass in here maybe the guys can order some in and plant some more uh, next week or whenever they get their next delivery but i definitely suggest maybe planting out that mid that foreground a bit more with some hair grass but it's fine it's gonna these weeds in the background are absolutely going to hopefully prevent any algae okay we're nearly there aren't we now i wonder if we should put a big java fern in here what do you think guys let me know in the comments do you think we should put a java fern in here and if so where should we put it Okay, I think I've got room for a Java fern. I'm just going to go and get one. I'll be back any minute.
Okay. I don't know what everyone's saying, if they want Java Fern or not, but you're getting Java Fern anyway. So, we've got Trident Fern here. And I'm just going to prepare it quickly for you. And then what we'll do... Of it in here, so the, the stem plants are creeping over the, the wood. There's a little gap here which I can hopefully just plug that into. There's one. Better already, isn't it? Perfect. So I've just been told by the owner that the tank itself is two hundred and nine ninety nine from International Tropical. So a bargain for this size tank with a filter and lighting. I think that's a pretty, pretty good deal. Sorry, and a heater as well. So everything you need to get started on a decent size aquarium. Can't go wrong. You know, we're not all like you know. We are some of us are on strict budgets, but you still might want something a bit bigger. You know, something for all budgets, isn't there? Okay, one more. Back there. Fish be. Okay, now we're ready to fill. What I'm going to do is get. I'm going to tell a story first. For lots of story time. Welcome to story time with George Farmer and his red colander. So I've had this colander 17 years. It's starting to break, uh, but I think it adds to it to its kind of charm really. So. I've got a confession to make. It isn't actually officially, I would suggest, my colander. So what happened was I was given a, I was given a second-hand tank to scape for Practical Fish Keeping Magazine to do a step-by-step. -step. And I, I can't remember exactly how it happened, but the colander was al already in the aquarium um, when I scaped it. And no one kind of laid claim to it. And I used it for the first time to fill up the aquarium, obviously, with water. And the reason we do that, if you don't know, is to disperse the water so it doesn't create too much disturbance in the soil. And I used this as it was designed to be. And I, I loved it. I thought, what a genius idea. So I basically stole it. Uh, I did ask around, is this anyone's colander? No one took any ownership. So I took it. And that was 17 years ago. And it still serves me well. It's been all over the world with me. It's been, I've, I wouldn't list all the countries. Um, it's been to the States, you know, yeah, everywhere. And it's done almost every scape that I've created. So it's probably done between 500 and 1,000 scapes now. It's probably had over a million gallons of water go through it with water changes. So, yeah, really special. And I want to give a shout out to, oh, God, this is embarrassing. He's from, I think he's, he's got Arizona or AZ in his AZ fishy. He sent me some 3D printed key rings, red colander key rings. Um, so shout out to you, mate. Um, if you're watching, I apologise for not remembering your name. Uh, maybe some, someone knows already. And then uh, another friend of mine, Paolo Leal, who's the UCAPS webmaster, he 3D printed me uh, one for my Tropical Aqua Cube. So this is obviously too big for a Tropical Aqua Cube, which is like eight inches square, 20 centimetres square. This is far too big, so he actually custom built me one specifically for the Tropic Aqua Cube. Uh, I've also got this on uh, my kind of branded Keep On Scaping t-shirts, uh, produced by Moss Cotton. Um, so yeah, the Red Colander, the legend. Okay, are we ready for water? So what I'm going to do is, I'll, I'll show you around the scape first, and then we'll start filling, because it's going to probably take a little while to fill don't want to get cloudy water. Okay, so let's just have a little look around. 
So the wood's really intricate, actually. I really like this wood. So I think I'm going to suggest to Warren that he gets some more hair grass for the foreground. He could probably get another four or five pots in there, squeeze them, you know, squeeze as much out of it as you can, separate them into as many portions as you can. Okay. Anyone in German? Ich bin der Deutsch. So there you go, quite heavily planted. Those background stem plants are going to really bring it to life straight away. In a few days, they're all going to grow straight up and create a really nice background effect. We've got Laganendra Mebolgii red and Cryptochorini wendentii in the midground, and then we've got this this Echinodora species in the in the midground around the centre. And then we've got some epiphyte plants with the trident ferns there as well. Okay. I'm going to put you back on the tripod. Just make sure we're... Okay guys, let's get the water in there. And got such a clip to put it on the side. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to hold it, stand here. I can stand here and just chat, it's no problem. I can go into full ramble mode. Everyone loves a rambler, right? Okay, so Warren, my new friend. Let's just turn the water on and then we're gonna go into story time. What do you want to know about? I can't even see the screen, so um, what should we talk about? Let's talk about what's coming up uh, in the future for the GFS gallery. Uh, if you don't follow my YouTube already, make sure you do. It's gonna be some exciting updates soon. I want to do a full on kind of grand reveal. I'll try to do a live stream. And funnily enough, technology failed me again. I did a live stream on YouTube, did a tour of my gallery. You know, you've got seven displays there now, and uh, the Wi Fi kept cutting out, and then the 4G kept going wrong. Um, so, I want to do a fully recorded, edited, produced uh, version, cinematic, maybe me chatting next to each tank as well. So, you can look forward to that soon. Uh, big news the Wazley Highline 400 for Discus has. Is ready the hardscape's finished I've got all the soil I've got all the plants so I'm hoping to escape that on Friday so that's really exciting um, some of you may know I did visit I did a private client yesterday an ADA 660p system um, for another for a private client so there'll be a full tutorial video on that soon as well so yeah that's what's coming soon on the on the YouTube Make sure you follow international underscore tropicals on Instagram. Have you got any more followers since the stream started? Yeah, hope so. And you've got but your your Facebook page is quite active, isn't it? Yeah. How many sort of posts are you doing a day? Yeah. Okay. You always got kind of some sort of discount or sale on usually. I've noticed. Yeah. Really good quality fish, guys. If you watched from the beginning of the stream, we did a a, a real kind of whirlwind tour. Of this lovely little store, really great quality fish. Um, the owner is super passionate, and the manager as well, really, really knowledgeable guy. And I'm sure they'd welcome you before Thursday. <laughs> Are you staying open? Oh, okay, that's that's good to know. Yeah, your essential store because you got yeah your your pet store, aren't you? Well, especially your food, fish food. Yeah, yeah. So if you are in the area, obviously social distancing, mask on, hand cleaning, all that good stuff. But it is remaining open, so come to see International Tropicals here in Lowestoft in Suffolk. It's actually quite a nice town, isn't it? I'm quite, I've, I came here with it. No? I'm trying to, just trying to be nice. It's a lovely town. It is, it is actually quite nice. Yeah, I love a seaside. I'm a sucker for any seaside town, to be honest. Yeah. Is it cloudy or is it looking alright? Clear as a gin clear. That's what we like.
So, just a refresher of the whole system. This is the Superfish Start 150. £209.99 pence from International Tropicals. Comes complete with internal filter, heater, and LED lighting. You can up. Does it come with a two or one lamp? Comes with one lamp, but there's another space to add another one, isn't there? Which is what we're going to do on here just to get the best out of the plant growth. So all of that is two hundred nine ninety nine, which is a bargain for I think for a forty gallon or one hundred and fifty litre aquarium, all in. And if you stick to easy plants, if you invest in good quality plants, enough of them, a good soil, good liquid fertilizer, good maintenance practice, then you should succeed quite easily with this range of easy plants that we've got in here. Oh, okay, so that's good to know. So if you do buy this tank from International Tropicals, then they will chuck in a £25 voucher to use towards fish and plants. I should work on QVC. No, no it's, a, it's a lovely store. I didn't know what to expect, to be honest. I, I saw your Facebook stuff. But yeah, it's just a real kind of classic fish store vibe, but clean and tidy and good quality fish is what you want. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. And the tanks are clean. I always judge a, if, if I judge a, t uh, a, I judge a shop on the quality of its display scapes, but you haven't got any until now, and obviously I like this one. <laughs> okay. Okay. But uh, Darren was saying he's going to do a proper full on sort of gallery studio sort of thing. Yeah, yeah that'd be cool. Yeah. Well, let me know and I'll come in and give you a hand. Yeah. yeah. That'd be good con that, that would definitely be good content for YouTube because I can record it properly yeah. <laughs> rather than going live all the time. Yeah. But yeah, you're, you're, quite, a, you're quite a distance from me. About two, two and a half hours it took me to get here. Yeah, near Cambridge, yeah. I just listen to audio books and podcasts in the car. <laughs> yeah, keeps me busy. Is it? Yeah. Ah, that's a good learning point. You will get the occasional floater, but you could just pop it back in with the tweezers. Do you want to st um, start getting the light ready for the, for the actual tank? Oh, I've got it. Yeah, yeah. Is it ready to switch on? Is it plugged in? Oh yeah, it's a little cabin hole. Oh, I've got it. Yeah, just under here. Yeah, there's a black carbon. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Is this just tap water that's going in? Oh, okay. To get a bit of heat. Okay, we've got some floaters. No dramas. We'll just replant those in a bit. Everyone loves that trickling noise, don't they? <laughs> this is this custom design. Look at that. The magic red colander lives on. It's got like a clothes tag or anything. No one likes to float though, do they?
the light that like, the time goes up. And it would not make it good. <laughs> I'm going to grab some Duke Okay, can you hear me guys? Let me know. Okay, what I'm going to do now, guys, just to touch some beautiful Andra. Spotted another lovely couple of cracks in the wood. This is my favourite technique for attaching plants. The easiest way is just pop it in. And then after a few weeks, that's going to self attach, no problem. doesn't matter if there's a little bit of this uh, fiberglass wall left on there, that's completely harmless. It just doesn't look very pretty. So 
so try to remove as much as you can. a little bit of extra character to the wood. When you're doing maintenance on it, just try not to touch the wood as much as you can, because it, until it's gone, all the plants are matted around it, it's a little bit unstable. a messy hobby at this case Thanks Mark. Mark, it's international tropicals, not international aquatics. Embarrassing. You're embarrassing me in front of my friends. International tropicals. I've been calling it that, haven't I? I've not been calling it international aquatics, have I? No, you've been calling it I've been calling it the right one. Yeah, that's good. That was a bit embarrassing. I've got a question about Java Farm. Some people say they grow like weeds, and for me, they've always just slowly gone brown, died off. Yeah. Is that lack of flow or...? You need, yeah, you need a good, good one to start with, so make sure it's fresh from the nursery. And then, yeah, good circulation, some liquid fertiliser, ideally CO2. I mean, if you, if you can get CO2 in there, you'll get a much better chance of growing everything, anything. Yeah. But Java fern, to make it look good, it's actually not an easy plant. It's regarded as really easy, but to make it look good like you do in the, the nice photos and stuff, actually, they're grown with, with high lighting and CO2. So although it's labelled as an easy plant, and it will kind of... Yeah, they label it as low light as well, don't they? Yeah, but it, to, to look, look its best, it, it, it does need... Whereas Anubius and Crips and, you know, Luca Philandra, they, they actually do really well in low light. Yeah. But Java Fern is actually a little bit more demanding than I would, you know, that, that most people kind of realise. How far are we going to go? We're going to go up to the lip so we can't see the waterline. Yeah, let's do that. Fit the, fit, fit the filter later. So what fish are we put in here? That's the question. What are you going to put in there? Not clean. I'm going to get some just small shoaling fish like roast borers or em ember tetras. That'd be quite nice. Embers. Yeah, it's like 20 embers in there. Some shrimp. Got a tank full of them and galaxy reservoirs. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. Galaxy reservoirs would suit this. Yeah. Quite a lot of hiding places for them, so they'll feel really, really secure. The only problem with galaxies is you have to have them in such high number for them to yeah. gain confidence. Yeah, to them agreed. Maybe that. A bit more. Now we're good. That's it. Yep. Yep. Okay, we'll get the. The lid on with the lights. I'm gonna take my. Can you put it on for me, Tom? Do you know how to do it? Are you scared? Are you scared? Don't be in front of the camera, do you? Yeah, just hold that off for a minute. Yeah, just. Okay. Turn 
Ça. Oh, for that. Yeah, for that. Uh. Proper adapt and overcome live stream, isn't it? Okay, there we go. Okay, guys, there you go. A full aquascaping workshop on Instagram. Uh, first time I've ever done that actually, uh, thanks YouTube and uh, I wanted to say thanks to International Tropicals for inviting me along today to aquascape this Superfish Start 150, 209.99 from International Tropicals. Come along, they're going to stay open during the, uh, our, you know, the kind of regulations, they're allowed to stay open because they sell uh, fish food etc which is an essential obviously uh, service. So come along, lower stuffed. Uh, big plans for the future for these guys. I'm excited to probably work with them more in the future. So make sure you follow them on Facebook as well, International Tropicals, and here on Instagram. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for your patience uh, with the technology dramas. Uh, completely out of my control, unfortunately. I did all the good stuff. I checked the internet connection before I started. And anyway, you don't need to know excuses. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. You take care. Keep on escaping. Cheerio.